I'd like to commend it to the House. Thank you. Jan Logie. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I too would like to take a moment to acknowledge your work in the House and say I will miss you. Um, for me, the most enduring memory was your leadership around Section 59. I think um, your shift in position on that was to the benefit of all children in this country. And it is a very rare thing to see people in this House often hearing the evidence and being able to shift in a public way. And it's something I maintain a huge amount of appreciation for. Um, so on to this bill, the last bill that we are debating in the 51st Parliament right before the adjournment speeches. It feels as if it's kind of, you know, getting the um, slot after lunch at a conference on the last day of the conference when nobody's likely to be listening or caring very much. But this is a very important issue. And I would like just to put some of the history on record as we discuss this. So what this is about is mandatory registration for social workers. And the framework to enable this was um, introduced into Parliament by a Labour government in 2001 when they introduced legislation to establish a framework for registration that was then voluntary. Um, and that passed in 2003. And the Green Party at the time, we called for a commitment from government um, to include a time frame in that legislation for the mandatory registration. So um, we thought 10 years was enough time, roughly, for the sector to be able to prepare and get upskilled to be able to um, deliver the mandatory registration. Um, but the Labour government at the time's view was that the compliance costs were, um, were high and that they weren't confident that it could be done in 10 years. Um, and, you know, we had different views on that. And we didn't want to leave it so that it would rely on someone else initiating another review. And I think now, you know, 2017, it does feel a little bit like we were right, <laughs> that it would have been good to have had it in the legislation um, to get that process um, just kick-started from that point. We also had another registra a reservation at that time, that the legislation lacked specific reference to te tiriti or waitangi and explicit acknowledgement of the obligations of the Crown. And there was quite a lot of discussion about that, and the social workers at the time were supporting that call, but felt they backed off it um, because they didn't think their legislation would get through if they stuck to that point. So without the backing of the social workers, we were we were willing to support the legislation. But there was, my understanding is, there was an intent for that to be revisited in the review three years later. And I haven't seen evidence of that. And in fact, we do not still, we do not have that in legislation. And considering the conversations that we've been having on relation to the legislation of Oranga Tamariki legislation, I do believe that um, this is an, still an incredibly important discussion for us as a country, specifically as it relates to social work. And I do hope people will submit on that point about how do we as a country ensure that our practice is consistent with te tiriti or waitangi and that the Crown is protecting those rights that are enshrined in our founding document to ensure whakapapa and the protection of tamariki Māori to their cultural identity and their whole selves. Um, so we look forward to that discussion as it goes to select committee in the next term. Um, so after another thing I do want to point to was that after the legislation was passed, that the government in 2005 established an NGO study award to support social workers or people practicing within their community-based organizations to get qualified. And the reviews of that study award were um, glowing 
in fact, um, that there was a review done by Massey University that showed that the students who had that study award were more committed to finishing their training, more confident in becoming practitioners, and reported high competence and self-reflection, which is a very key part of good social work practice, and that they continued working in NGOs after um, even after job changes, and that it was particularly beneficial for Māori. And so um, that was a really positive thing in helping with that transition. And yet, um, you know, we've heard the Social Services Select Committee year on year from the Social Workers Registration Board when we review them that there needed to be mandatory reporting. Um, and it's taken a long time. We also heard from the Aotearoa New Zealand Association of Social Workers that they wanted it. The white paper on vulnerable children that went to Cabinet also recommended mandatory registration, as did the Office for the Commissioner for Children. So I, I, I do have to admit to a certain degree of frustration that it's taken until the very last day <laughs> of the 51st Parliament for this to be introduced. When the Labour Party member, Carmel Cephaloni, introduced a bill in 2015 that could have had the support of government, the evidence was there. The calls from the profession and those with an interest in protecting um, our communities and our children in particular were all calling for this. Um, so it is hard to see that um, this wasn't, the delay wasn't an act of politics triumphing over best interests of our communities. Um, and I do and we have heard, it's already been mentioned in the debate this afternoon, that of the 2013 census, there were 18,000 people who identified as social workers in that census, but only 5,500 um, people at the time were registered as social workers, and which was clear evidence, really, that people were practising and there was a public expectation that they were registered and their um, practice had a degree of oversight, which was just not the case. And we have seen some disturbing and high-profile cases go to our courts that demonstrated that. Um, so, and we also know that at least in 2015, um, 500 social workers working within then the Child, Youth and Family were as yet unregistered. And they are staff members who had the support of the state working within a state institution that, again, it seems that there does seem to have been a lack of commitment in ensuring that they had the support to get qualified and registered. Um, and also note that um, the social workers in schools, that the Education Ministry of Education was unable to report on how many of those social workers were registered. So again, some more evidence that while we're getting this on the last day, it feels like the government has been very late coming to their party on how important this is. And I do want to register another concern that when I mentioned before the NGO Study Award and how important and successful it had been in upskilling people, is to recognise that the government canned that program last year, despite the really, really glowing reports of the benefits of it. And that does need to be seen, particularly in the context that the social work degree has now moved from a three-year course to a four-year course, that most of our community-based organisations' funding hasn't increased, their baseline funding, since 2008, and that the restrict, there have been restrictions introduced on access to students, uh, student allowance and ability to have um, funded access to education because we need social workers who have life experience and who come from diverse parts of our community, particularly people who have had poverty in their background. We, it makes them their work more real and we need to be ensuring that they are able to get in and practice as social workers and I think that that decision of the government if they want to ensure mandatory registration and diverse social workers they need to revisit that decision but the Green Party is happy to support this to select committee on this last few hours of this parliament. Derek Ball. 
Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to rise on behalf of New Zealand First to speak on the social workers' registration legislation.